and this is the speed review of the Mercedes AMG GTR. Speed reviews are a new segment now on Remove Before Race where we try to get over to you the facts and our opinions on a car as quickly as possible while maintaining the same high level of production that you're used to with Remove Before Race. And today it's one close to my heart because it is my own AMG GTR. Now this is better known as the beast of the green hell. It's called that because the car was actually developed on the green hell, better known as the Nürburgring. This is meant to be a GT3 race car with the practicality of a normal AMG GT for daily driving. So the best introduction I could give to the GTR is probably this. Yes. It is insane. So, what have they brought from the GT3 car? Well, first of all, we've got the nine stage traction control, which allows the driver to determine how much rear slip the car has, which is straight out of the GT3 car. We've also got rear axle active steering, which in layman's terms means that the car handles much more like a go-kart. It shortens its wheelbase on little corners, and if you're doing high speeds, it makes the wheelbase even longer in feel. The engine is that same thunderous V8 by turbo, four liter M178 by AMG. It is a better engine in every conceivable way from the previous naturally aspirated engine. I'm not gonna argue with you on that, that's my opinion. The power curve is exactly like the natural engine. It's got bounds and bounds more torque. There is absolutely no delay thanks to the hot V setup and it sounds louder more of the time than the SLS ever did. All that power goes to the rear. This is a rear wheel drive supercar, but in the dry, you would never think so with these Pilot Cup 2s having the car stick to the road. As well as those GT3 additions, there's extensive use of carbon fiber all around the car, including the front wings, and there's active aerodynamics with a carbon fiber splitter underneath the front of the car. It also has what is now standard across the GT range, which is air panel active aerodynamics with little gates in the front bumper, open and close as needed to let air in. Now getting onto the design, as I said, this is not just adding a big rear wing. The front and the rear of the car have been extended extensively. You need to think of something like going from a normal SLS to the SLS Black Series. It is a huge car on the front and the rear, and it gives it such a stance and such an aggressive look that the normal AMG GT looks much more of a daily sports car. Paired with the Panamericana grille that the GTR introduced from the GT3 car, it just looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex on wheels. Now this is the same V8 used in the standard AMG GT, but this one comes up from that 476 or 522 in the GTS to 585 brake horsepower with 700 newton meters of torque. And that's where the bi-turbos are really helping in that torque figure. And it is a number that you really feel in real life. There's so much torque, it's scary. Rear diffuser, also unique to the GTR with the special triple exhaust system, which we'll get onto shortly. And of course, you've got the big SLS Black Series style wing. The interior is much like the brilliant AMG GT. It's got the iconic V8 center console. You've got black Napa leather and Alcantara everywhere with your choice of colored stitch. But it doesn't go beyond that. That is pretty much the only option that you can get standard on the car. And it focuses you towards the fact that this is meant to be more of a track animal than something that you would really customize like the standard GTs. 
but if you still want to make the interior a little bit more dramatic you can get the option that I chose which is the AMG track package that adds the big roll cage in the back which you can also have in the body color of the car and it gives you the seat belts and the seats straight out of the current F1 safety car how cool is that now the 0 to 60 time is pegged at 3.6 seconds so why don't we try out a little launch and see what it feels like That is maniacally fast. But what I love about it, it doesn't seem too fast for the road, which a lot of supercars are getting close to now. It's just enough that you can enjoy it on a normal road without it being hindersome and you have to slow down immediately. Next, the sound. Oh my God. This has got a completely different exhaust to the normal AMG GT. This runs a titanium exhaust system with three exits on the rear and it sounds absolutely ludicrous. It's like you've doubled up the sound from the normal AMG GT and it's one of the few cars I actually have to shout to get you guys to hear me while I'm driving it in anger. There is no better sounding V8 in the world, especially a bi-turbo one. In terms of day-to-day -day driving, it is that sound that will differentiate it the most from something very close to it, like the AMG GTC Coupe. And it really is worth every penny. Now, my favorite bit about the GTR, other than sound, is the handling. You look at the official driving videos and you see these drone shots of the GTR driving through the Nürburgring. You're thinking, that has to be sped up. But I assure you, the way that the GTR corners thanks to the active rear wheel steering it's nothing short of magical and this is a rear wheel drive car clinging onto the road as if it's on rails when you see how well it corners it should not surprise you how fast this has recorded a lap time around the Nürburgring we're talking three seconds quicker than the 918 Spyder Porsche in Sport Auto's standardized tests that's quicker than a hypercar when you drive this, you can't imagine something any madder, but there are still two stages to come of the crazy AMG GT family. At the end of this year, there is going to be an even more track-focused version of this, one that sits slightly higher than the GTR. And that will come with a lot of this track package as standard, perhaps lighter weight, but the real news comes in 2020 when AMG revive the Black Series as the AMG GT Black. How the Black Series will manage to topple what is already an insane GT3 car for the road, my mind cannot even calculate that. But I'm really excited to see what AMG have planned. So in conclusion, when you drive the GTR, you come away addicted to its formula of crazy looks, insane sound, and precise handling. And you really begin to question whether you'd spend £100,000 more on other supercars when this is so good at the price that it's at. Very similar then to something like the Porsche GT3 or GT3 RS, but the difference being you can actually walk into a Mercedes dealership and order one of these, where it's probably going to be nigh impossible if you want the Porsche. It's almost like when you think about it, they've taken the great big T-Rex, imbued it with the powers of the Flash, and added some shark fins on for good measure. It's absolutely bonkers, but that's probably why it's just the coolest thing ever. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that speed review and I hope I showed you why the AMG GTR is one of the coolest supercars in the world. Keep an eye out for more speed reviews coming from Remove Before Race. Please do like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon.